Hello and thank you for staying with us. This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories. My name is Elsie Godwin and I've got my amazing co-anchors with me, Ife Omai and Benny Ag. Hi. Does that tickle you every time it's said? Yes, it, it's, it's amazing. You. It's good to be amazing. Do you have a problem with it? No, I'm okay. not. No, happy I'm International just... Women's Day, Thank darling. you. You I'm should just, wish just... us. Yeah, happy, happy International Women's Day. I was born in your day, man. Yeah, yeah. yesterday was his birthday. Yeah, was yeah. 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 Like, what well, did you say? I was born on International Women's Day, the yeah, 8th of March. So, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, happy International Women's Day and to happy belated birthday. every Thank woman you watching you us. Um, I mean, you're beautiful, you're strong, you're every good thing that tickles the fair. <laughs> <laughs> we love you and yeah. just keep doing you, keep being strong and don't stop fighting for your rights, definitely. And maybe happy birthday to Benny. Maybe. maybe. Mm. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's All maybe. right, should we start? Yes please. yes, please. Okay. Nicki Minaj's husband finally registers as sex offender. According to official records, Betty is officially in California's database of sexual offenders and a new mugshot has been uploaded. Oh. Yeah, I'm happy for Kenneth, right? Should and have done this like I'm happy. before, no, yeah. before, before. This what is a man is, who what's... wants to do good by himself. Uh, you can tell. Yeah. Oh, I, can't and, tell. I, I gotta commend him for that, you know. I mean, hey, he, he could have decided to go the other way and what other let the way law that? keep coming for him. But he did finally get to register. And so it, it gives me it gives me the hunch that he really has probably um, turned a new leaf in his life. Of course. But unfortunately this would keep haunting him for the rest of his life because he goes down in the book that you're you're a sex offender. Why and that did is he not register in the first place? I, I would say going was, back to that yes. for so many reasons. Yeah. And we did analyze it here the last time no, we, we did talked not, about though. it. You know, were analyzing if, it. if it was me, I, I would definitely have some inhibitions of just going to surrender myself and register. Yeah. Because um, this it's was staining. my this is my yeah. past. Yes, so now so you are fine past. that you had to be arrested twice. Before you are doing the right thing, and that's a sign of wanting to do good with your life, right? I, I think the fact the point meant he's is somebody tell himself he has really Finally, oh, please be where you're supposed to I be. I mean, I have I, <laughs> cut his brother's I flag, think, man. I think I am. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I think both angles are correct. Like yeah. you're a grown man, you should do what's correct, and he knew what was supposed to be done. But at the same time, I have to lean towards. Benny, because this crime that he committed, first of all, he was, an, was a minor when that happened. I was just going to say, he was, yeah, 16. he was 16. Even though he still tried to rape someone, doesn't make it, doesn't make it you know, right. Yeah, first degree attempted. Not that uh -huh. he did. Let's rape. not break the crime no, down. I'm just saying, it's a crime. It's a crime. You know, Let's not break the crime down. I totally agree. If, he, if he feels and he shouldn't have been convicted, he should start fighting if I, it. If I, you no, made a very I think you've made a very silent point in it. He was a minor. He was 16. Yeah. Now, I'm going to ask. I want to play the And he did his time. He did his time and they released him. So I feel like he is done with that. I don't think anyone has any rights to still be pointing fingers, especially because nothing has happened but since. But the law been, says it has to be been, on that. Thank register. you. And he's supposed to register. So maybe we should start questioning the law. You know, the question is. No, I don't think you should question the law. I, I still think questions. I still think people what, need to. Why, people, why, have why not? Questions. Because he was a minor. He was a minor. So yes. yeah, we should. So was question this supposed the to go law. to jail for that? A sixteen-year-old that attempted to rape someone. Somebody. Was this supposed to go to jail? I need to know that, especially when it comes. The reason why we have sex offenders being registered like that is to protect children yes mm -hmm. so i need to know that i don't care if you were 15 12 i was not 16 when you know 16 did you no, rape but someone his question no, is my question he is, was a minor he was, yeah. a minor. was he supposed to, to go, go to jail, to jail? Well, That's yeah, the he went jail. to he went to juvenile jail yes That's, it's still jail yes I, jail, you, okay now what, when is the argument jail. of whether or not kids should go to prison mm -hmm. yes i think they should why you because they juvenile, should. yeah because juvenile prison is not the same as now, as wanna, adult prison juvenile prison is supposed to be corrective supposed to take people away and just because they're kids doesn't mean that they're all innocent. Unfortunately, we have know, kids that adult are kid, adult prison supposed to be correctional. correctional. Yeah. yeah. So but you know, but why you know, not? As a minor for the rest of his life, this this will always follow him to the day. That's not our problem, though. You know. But this is my point. I want to play the racist card. If he was a white boy and he was a minor, do you think the same the same ruling would have applied? I mean, there's white boys in prison, but. Yeah, am, am, I, am I going to say that there isn't injustice the with the black yes. community? Yes. And that men are, uh, black men are mass incarcerated? Yes. Because, because I sense some kind of injustice in that It's not that he tried to rape right? someone. What yes. are you on about? I Just because the white people are not getting ju um, um, the justice served doesn't mean that black people shouldn't. I'm not, I'm he not committed trying to trivialize. a crime. I'm not trying okay. to trivialize a crime. Because I was with right? you and but I'm I, not I just thought about it. He was a minor. He was a 16. Was he supposed to go to he jail? He still tried to rape someone. Yes, he still tried to rape someone. He tried to. He tried to. All right, moving on real quick to the next story. People 
of questionable characters have joined Yoruba movie industry. This is coming from Jaye Kuti. Speaking in an interview with Saturday Beat, she said, and I quote, it is totally unacceptable to say that actresses don't have morals. We have people that are of good moral standing. However, a lot of people that came from nowhere all in the name of wanting to be actresses are now there. So doves have been mixed with chickens. Some of these people were not even part of us originally. I crossed over from English movies to acting in Yoruba films, yet I still had to go and meet the elders to formally tell them that I wanted to be part of them. I did that so anybody wouldn't ask me where I was coming from. It's just unfortunate that some people with questionable characters have joined the industry and we don't know where they come from. But when such people start to miss behave, the public categorizes everybody as one, but we are not. End of quote. I feel where she's coming from. Um, at the end of the day, I think it's, it's two sides of the same coin. There are people who believe in going through the process to get to where they want to get to in their chosen field or career. And that's a movie field, you know, there's a shortcut to it. And either way, you get to pay a price. And it feels, it feels bad knowing that, you know, you've, you've committed so much of your time and years into your craft to make sure you make something out of it and give some dignity to the craft. Then they just people just you know they can slip their way through to the top, and at the end of the day, everybody's categorized as same. I remember a certain OAP coming out sometime last year to say something about all OAPs, um, something about all OAPs slipping around or something. I can't I can't remember a particular words right now. We did talk about it on the table here. You know, he, it makes it makes a mess of your effort because not everybody slips around to get to where they want to get to, where they want to achieve. And so she coming out to say this at the end of the day. Um, he who wears a shoe know where exactly it pinches, you know. And at the end of the day, there will always be those people in, in society, those who believe, you know what, I got to do it right to get to where I want to get to. And those who believe, you know what, <laughs> um, you know what? if I have to, I don't agree. If, if, me, I have to okay, if I have to, mm -hmm. if I have to do some certain things mm -hmm. which is considered immorally Illegal. wrong, mm -hmm. I would do it to also get to where I want to get to. And that seems to characterize the entertainment industry. We can't mm. even deny that. Okay, you know. she wasn't talking about, <laughs> from my understanding, yeah. she wasn't talking about processes. Um, if I, no, not processes, people who at the end of the day just, they just come from nowhere and, and they give the, the industry a bad name. And definitely she was talking about immoral behavior. You make it yeah. sound like this industry is like, a, is like a building and then there's the principal and head of staff. Like the industry is massive. Which elders? Did she go to every single elder in the industry? No, that, that and, elder part, and I, I, would don't, like I don't to understand know, I would like to know yeah. also when these people started coming to the industry so we can begin to understand who the people she's talking about are. And, and I don't think right? because I'm in an industry, an I must... No, let's have your confession, okay, please. Uh, confession. No, I say, is that a confession? When you said uh, you would do anything that, whatever. Um, <laughs> no, no, that's not necessarily. Okay, no. so my, my <laughs> issue with this is one, yeah. just because I'm in an industry doesn't mean you control my moral compass. I can be sleeping around as a doctor, as a lawyer, as a pilot, as a banker, in whatever industry it is. So I don't understand why sleeping with people has anything to do with my industry, except you're saying, no, saying hey, let me finish. Of except you're saying that you're, they you're all sleeping. What is the behavior? What behavior is not even no, told us what the behavior is. What it's, is the behavior? It's, it's not easy to. It's not so difficult and who, to give it to just, the who doesn't, who, who doesn't get categorized? I think, I think it's, the a, only it's a thing, flimsy to me. This this topic is very trivial yeah. and very flimsy. Who's who's categorizing you? And what? Are, who isn't categorized in some way? The fact that you look like that, somebody has categorized you into oh, yeah. something. We, we all get so everybody gets. So what is special about this? And then you're not saying that you have given it. You have given yourself the job to go and start fishing them out. Like, I don't understand. Am I your... Is this a church? Like, uh, who is keeping up with this so moral that's, standard? Saying, you know, there's really nothing wrong with people, whatever, whatever we decide If you want to... Like, why not? Don't talk around, about... Sleep you no, you don't need that. I mean. Wait, was she talking about sleeping around? What was exactly if, she referring to? Forget the elder she was mentioning. For me, if I'm some, going to talk about... Come about into the industry if I want to understand... Hold on. Name. If I want to understand where she's coming from, from my own perspective, I would say most of the Yoruba... Nollywood actresses, please don't come for me. They can be very loud mouthed. Lousy. And lousy. But what is my business with what anybody's doing with their private parts? That is not what characterizes the yes, industry. Yes, because your private part is making them give them a general name she doesn't, she doesn't what buy. What is the general well, yeah, name? What is you know, it? What is it? The and so because they give you a, a stereotypical general name, you're going to stress yourself and take the elders with you to fish people out. Mm. I don't know of all the things to be doing in the industry, so you're going to fish people out based on their morals. She wasn't saying that if you want to go into the industry, you should have some level of training mm. or certification. Or She's saying you must know the goons. You must know the OGs. You must be friends with the elders. You are coming from. Where are you coming from? 
maybe that was what she was trying to say, but for lack of better uh, on this word, oh, okay. she couldn't just say it right. right. But I'm saying at the end of the day, I feel the people at the end of the day who are paying their dues, who have, who have put so much into the craft. Yeah, which is should, what I'm saying. You are talking about processes, but yes, that didn't sound like what you're talking giving about. Their due props, and even if that is the case, yeah. what about some? So who, who, how does that affect you? You're doing your thing. You're whatever. You're you're doing the work, and I'm not, and I'm sleeping around. How does that affect you? The people who just always have. An opinion about yeah, that. Yeah. Okay. You so know, everybody so has she's opinions. One, she's one of such people that you know what. Um, and I wish she had mentioned names. She had named names. To well, your, at least be you know, specific about the behavior. Exactly what behavior it is. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it comes up. I don't see how what Jessica's people. what Jessica, Jessica is doing at home is affecting. But at the end of the day, um, Cynthia, like whoever do your own to thing. Do what they want to do to get them to where they want to get to. They're still paying an ultimate price, and that is their prerogative. It shouldn't be your business. And it's not really yeah. not. But let's <sighs> okay. It's time for a quick break. But when we return, Bemi or Lateru or Lagbegi is in the news. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child. I just see them every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like an Alibaba? Alibaba. Oh, <laughs> Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to die, everybody feeling all right. Still buy. Sometimes I look myself, minimal are you? Mm. Music is for mature-minded people. I got DM sometimes from Malawi, like, woo! <laughs> <laughs> sleeping early, sleeping early. <laughs> Welcome back. This is still Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. Sometimes being the bigger person is overrated. And this is coming from media personality, Bimi Olateru Olagbegi. She went on to say, you can do your own back, I beg. Sometimes the other person needs to be taught a lesson, end of quote. I totally agree with Bimi on this because um, I think people take advantage of the fact when they tell you, you know, hey, you're the bigger person, mm. be the mature person. I stopped being a bigger person that's like it. For that two reason, years ago. Um, <laughs> You're, you're supposed to take any BS anybody throws at you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, you're also human. You, you feel you feel it when people say things you want to react to. You also have that part of your tongue that's not so seasoned, you know, that can actually cuss out an entire generation. And so people take advantage of that. And many times celebrities are, are the receiving end of this and mm. you're not supposed to respond. You, you be the bigger person. No, but you just said I something. I want to be the smaller you person. Know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, humanly. Are we you, saturated yeah, in that you know, area? Humanly, like... you got to me. But yes, sometimes again, you choose your battle. Is mm, it worth yeah. it? Should I respond to you? And uh, I choose. But sometimes I choose it's not about being worth it. Like what she said, yeah. teach the person That's a it. lesson. You know, like, mm. don't, don't come at me this way because I can also decide to be foolish and stupid as you are because mm. I also have my fundamental human right to be stupid. <laughs> all right? You're not the only one with th that can exercise that right. So let's all be guided, please. Mm. Like be very guided. So I, I'm 100% with her on this. But again, choose your battles. You know? I think I'll have to put that into yeah. context of where that applies. I think for relationships and work, I will always do take the higher road. Mm. Just because I spend a lot of my life in there, I'd rather just have peace. And the way I work, I'm not, I, I don't really retain that much. I feel like once I say it, uh, it's done. I'm not like dwelling on it. So it's very easy for me to just let it go. But if it comes to friendships, for example, or new relationships, I'm very quick to quickly like put the, you know, the measures down and everything. But when it comes to, like I said, work and thingy, I would just like to... When it like comes to, to relationship, maybe mm. I can take the higher road, but yeah. still work. I was just going to say that for me. I think work... <laughs> I think work. I, I think business environment is one of the most easiest toxic places where place people you can, can be actually in. take advantage of you and... and but I'm not about to start you, you know, having pick fights with each person. No, you don't have to do that. Like, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my boundaries. We're here to work. All right, I think clearly. taking the higher road is yeah. setting your boundaries. That's it. You know, so know it from the start. But when so, somebody um, crosses that boundary. Um, then you have you have something coming. You just did it. <laughs> your talk face like, <laughs> I'm coming for you. You know, and for relationships, I might, I might, you know, take the higher road because, okay, I, I want to understand you because there's a whole lot of understanding. Mm, you know, and there's somebody, a whole lot of feelings, love, it, Emotions you know, involved in intimacy. it. Intimacy. So, but again, mm. it's, it's not going to be always at my detriment because mm. before before you know it becomes toxic. It could yeah. have become um, a behavioral pattern without a person. So I need to understand what exactly this is, you know, but 
in the workplace, please set the boundaries. So, I mean, you know, we are. Because you can there. even take that, that statement that's saying take the high road as what you can use to teach the person. Because mm. when you say take the high road, like what exactly do, do we mean, mean by that? I could take the high road straight to the MD. <laughs> and that's a very high road. And, and you know, amazing, I've come <laughs> to realize than dealing that with sometimes you people say, you know, I was just trying to be nice. Mm. Niceness isn't you sometimes um, displeasing yourself. Niceness is me actually telling you the way it is sometimes. I'll see. Don't talk to me that way. So mm. people feel they, they confuse niceness to mean, you know what, always take whatever they give to you. Mm. I, I don't want to be rude. No, no, no. Stating what works for you is not being rude. Because I don't, I don't Nigerian, think I'll call it nice you, either. Exactly. In, in, in the Nigerian context, once I'm, I'm bold and assertive in telling you what I don't appreciate, to some people like you're coming up, she comes up rude and arrogant. No, it's me letting you know you can't, I, this is how. I want to be treated. I'm setting the standard. So if, if you're not okay with it, mm -hmm. then please take a seat somewhere at the back. No, oh, why at the back? Not by your side. No, not by my side <laughs> because you can't be by my side. Because things can happen. You know? The hand moves, you know. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next story. Rema, fire boy are motivators, not competitions. And this is coming from Joe Boy. So he had a an interview with Sammy Wash um, on MTV Biz. And of course, he, he said a lot of things. But I like that he has this mindset because... So many people in the creative space would normally see themselves as competitors um, rather than understanding that they are there to kind of fulfill their personal art purpose. And I, I am sad that we didn't get to talk about um, a topic we were supposed to discuss last week um, regarding someone who came out to say that, I can't remember the exact word now, but he was trying to also say that he's doing this to just better himself and also encourage artists to do the same thing as comedians do. Because when you look at the comedians and what they do on Instagram, that's the Instagram. Even the stand-up comedians, they actually support themselves a yeah. great deal. So one of them is having an event. Everybody's promoting that event. Yeah, one of them, an they're doing... That, right? not, yeah, it was an Brian, artist. Was it um, not, I think it was Sam Clef. Sam Clef, yes. So he was the one. Um, they're having a skit. You can see a, a, a comedian that just started today. And of course, the comedian is big already and already collaborating with other bigger um, um, comedians to create content and push out there. And everybody stays relevant. Everybody's making a few money, some monies from um, YouTube. You're getting recognition. You're working for brands. And the space is big enough. Yeah. So I think I like that mindset. And I yeah. think it's very healthy as mm. far as I'm concerned. I think for a, cre for a creator, that's a good place to, to be in. From a consumer perspective, I would still say that they're a com competition. Was, to me, yeah. mm -hmm. for me, yep. it's, it's still competition. Like, I would, I, I'm not going to download all that music, so I'm going to figure out, I'll compete, Ooh. I'll play them against each other. Whose album is the best that I, I want to download? So, mm. from a consumer perspective, it's still a competition, but it's a healthy space for him to be in, to think like that. And you can absolutely, absolutely get um, influence from each other and, from, and make good music. So, I like the lullaby perspective, but for me, well, in know, reality... Not, for now, in rea the reality is not really a about downloading anymore people just stream mm. so it depends on your mood and what you want to listen to i can't say i have anybody's song on my phone anymore i just open my apple music and i stream so i can be doing fireboy today and tomorrow i feel like joe boy yeah but it goes i've never really even... felt like rema anyway i'm sorry but yeah, yeah. I'm just saying so yeah. mm -hmm. it goes even deeper than that like concerts and stuff i feel like this these people my worry with them is that they they have so, i think i can remove Rema a bit from that, mm -hmm. to be honest. I think Rema makes just a little bit more different type of music. But Joe Boy and Fireboy, like if they had a concert together, that's when you know that this is not a lullaby song and there will be real competition because they will be offering me the same vibe. So I'm going to have to pick which one do I like more. Um, and that's why I'm saying that it's for, for, from a consumer perspective, it is a competition. I'm beginning to begin to fall in love. Hmm. Benny. Yeah. Um, she, like you rightly said, when, when I have to pick, that, that's always going to have... That, that is always going to happen mm -hmm. for those who consume the music, you know. But I think it's a good it's a good place he is in in the art sphere to think, you know. Nobody, I'm not competing with anybody, um, and so. But unfortunately, what we all don't realize at the end of the day, whether the very moment you wake up and you step out of your house, you get on that stage, whatever it is you do, people are already measuring you that way. Mm -hmm. It's that's competition already. You get mm -hmm. measured by people. Well, let them do know? the competition, um, the measuring. But, but, don't do yeah. it yourself. Yeah. But is, is, it, is that is, is the same with every mind out there who, who who has some certain kind of art form? I don't think so because you're somebody setting out setting concerts, setting out arena, setting out. That's there's always that that, mm -hmm. that, uh, uh, that just, thing that will come in. Just like, to okay, change you know? perspective, yeah. I think I'm also very happy about the fact that we can even say three young boys. That I don't think that was in my childhood. Like I don't remember growing up looking at young people in my playlist. Like we had 
people who were always older. The only person I can think of was Whiskey, and that was still when I was much older. I feel like now the millennials really have young people representing their music. Um, and in this part of the world. Yes, right? in this yes. part of the world. Um, and they're doing really well for themselves. Like, remember as a kid, they all are, and they're doing really well producing good music. I think the ones that I remember well, growing up... you know up, they had Corey DeBillo and Ricardo Banks too at some point. Yeah, I guess yeah, so. Yeah, at some point, that's mm -hmm. it. Yeah. You know, but I, I, again, I think it's a good thing for the Nigerian music industry to know that we have youngsters who are coming and yeah. they're hit makers. I, I want to see this know, in... Luke Cash was supposed people, to be in that space, but... That's, that's what I was going to say, that the ones that I remember... So yeah, yeah. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, the ones no, that I no. saw didn't really have... I guess Alte Vibe also launched these people because the Alte Vibe is very millennial. So you have a juicy, Very, a you have all those people. Air, jeans, yeah. Barge, um, but what I want to start water. seeing now are women in that age category. Um, mm. And I'm guessing culture sure. is not what's not sure. allowing us to see that. Their parents don't well, allow them to yeah. go out, first of all. Well, they're, they're, <laughs> to meet people. That age. That big. I can't say one. I can't think of one. Good girl, good girl, LA. Good girl is LA. late 20s. Yeah, she's, and then she's um, not, what's the other girl name now? Um, the one you want to try me. Um, Tames, 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 maybe sorry. you know, but I don't think I don't think they're in their teens. They're, no, they're they're Tames well over twenties, over yeah. 20s, you know. Yeah. But again, it's still really a good thing to see that we have youngsters who people are now looking up to for vibes and hits away from the regular, the usual suspects, yeah. you know, them two faced Timaya. And I hope that their uh, parenting skills also change because um, if you look at like the Western world, we can take cues from them and see how that can easily turn left for mm. people who start too early in the industry. And I don't think that Nigeria is going to be any different for these kids. Um, I remember watching when we, we, we talked about Rema and he was saying that he wanted girls to be quiet. I remember watching the whole interview actually. And there's some few things in there that I was just like really worried about. Like, I hope this man has proper like eyes Dying on hands. things because he needs to go watch um what's it called justin bieber's documentary coming out and talking about his depression and his drug abuse and all of that stuff and they are kind of like in the same category and take a few cues from there so i wish them the very best but i i really hope that they have like serious guidance going on in this journey because I, I i i see them getting even just bigger from here yeah so talking about the old dogs like you mentioned two-faced have you listened to his new, to album? new yeah. EP, have you? No, no, is there an ep on album it's an album. It's an album. Well, yes. Yeah. Just, just it's an clips amazing. On, on, I've heard on one. Instagram, you know. Was it the one with Burner Boy? Yeah, I think it was okay. the one with Burner Boy. I've heard that one, but I haven't heard. No, you need else. to listen to the whole album. And until you do that, that's how I wrap up this episode of Tea Time. Thank you for watching. And remember, you can catch up on this conversation and this episode by visiting and subscribing to our YouTube channel, La Plus TV Africa. You can also watch Tea Time on Auto TV and in London on Ben Television. My thank you as always to go to my co-anchors, Ife Omai and Benyak and the entire production team. Thank you for watching Plus TV Africa's Tea Time. My name is Elsie Godwin. Do stay with us.